Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to look at some videos. Uh, all right, so this next slide, social media networks influence 74% of consumer buying decisions. If you're a company that sells a service or a product and you're not on social media, are you missing out based on that statistic? Yes. <laughs> Big time. Um, what was the next one? It's like I said, they went by so fast. Okay, Facebook has a lot of users. We know that. It would be a huge country. Over half of Facebook users only use mobile to get to it. You're not sitting on a big computer anymore. You're on your mobile device. So it has to be mobile friendly and mobile optimized. So 88% of the revenue comes from mobile ads. Again, if you're a company thinking of putting ads on Facebook, you're going to think, who is the demographic of Facebook? Um, and you know you can target people on Facebook because how many of you are on Facebook? Or is that like not your gig anymore? Okay. Do you see the ads on the side that pop up yeah. that are related to things you've searched for or that you might like? Because Facebook knows your demographics. They know what you click on and they sell that information to advertisers. Um, 95 million photos and videos are posted to Instagram every day. Wow. 95 million a day? That's baffling to me. Pizza and steak are the most popular. Okay, Instagram. We talked about engagement and influencers. So companies that are very much on Instagram tend to be lifestyle, fashion, um, makeup, things like that. So let's look at this. 10 times better than Facebook, 54 higher than Pinterest, and 84 times higher than Twitter. So what we're going to realize in the course of this class is that each of these different social media platforms has benefits depending on what your market is, who your demographic is, and what kind of message you want to get out. Um, Facebook is kind of known for an older demographic now, not younger kids. Um, Pinterest. Um, well, we'll talk about it as we hit each one of these throughout the course of the class. But they definitely have their own different um, reach and demographic. 86% of Twitter revenue comes from mobile. I guess the gist is run our phone. LinkedIn. Here's an interesting one. We talk about LinkedIn being your professional profiles and networking with professional connections. It's closer to half and half, 56% male, 44% female. Some of the other different social media options are more skewed towards men or women. LinkedIn, 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 Snapchat. 60% are under 25 years old. So if your demographic that you're trying to hit and sell to is younger, finding a way to maybe be on Snapchat or get some content on Snapchat is going to be wise for you. Um, we talk about influencer market, marketing. Why do you pay somebody a million dollars to be your brand influencer? Evidently because it makes you um, six million, six point five million for every one million you spend. So why not? There's good um, return on investment. Fifty-nine percent of influencers believe Instagram is the most effective network for engaging their audience. I think that was kind of proven earlier as well. Um, YouTube subscribers. How many of you subscribe to a YouTube channel or follow a YouTube channel pretty religiously? A bunch of you? Okay. Um, so 6 in 10 will follow the advice over their favorite movie or TV personality. Do you agree with that? What do you like about the YouTube videos that are just normal people? Like why do you follow their advice compared to a Hollywood star telling you the same thing? Yeah. It was not fake. Yeah, you kind of, you relate probably. And yeah. If this guy is able to do this in his garage, I probably can too. All right. This I thought was interesting. 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. How many of you agree with that? Okay. How many of you disagree? How many of you have no opinion? <laughs> So why, why do you think, um, why would, why did you say yes? I'm just curious. I mean, because I've done it. Yeah. You know, I've like, went to search for something and I'm like, well, I wonder how, like, the 
material is or how it's going to fit. And I'll just go look at the reviews and okay. it's, the answer is there for me. Yeah. I guess with these online reviews, the one thing that you usually have over your friend pool is that there's more of them. Like there's 3,000 reviews on this shirt and you probably know three people that have it or whatever we're saying. So um, if the quantity is there and the content is there to give you an answer, it can be trustworthy. Have any of you ever gone to buy something and you've looked at the reviews and like half of them are like, this is the best thing ever and half are like, this thing is junk. <laughs> yeah. That's so frustrating to me because I'm like, oh. There's some fake though. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say that. You can like read some of them like, come on now. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's so frustrating as a business owner, which is also why you really have to monitor your social media. I saw one where something got like zero stars on Yelp and it took their five star, that's another one we didn't talk about, down to a little bit less than that. And the thing was, don't know, never been there before. Zero stars. It's like, really? Or one, you know, it's like, who does that? And then that hurts the business, too. So once you get on social media as a business, you have to monitor it and stay on top of it and answer things. And we'll talk about that in the class, too. All right. So this is very, very powerful from a marketing standpoint of a business. You can target, communicate with your target audience one-on-one -on -one as often as you want and fairly inexpensively, too. So if you want to target men only that live in Sheboygan, only that drive um, pickup trucks, only that drive Ford pickup trucks, only that drive maroon pickup trucks bought in 2018 and later, there's data out there that will give you that person and you can target those people. It's crazy powerful. So instead of just putting an ad in the newspaper and spending the money and maybe one in 1,000 readers is interested in your ad, you now target it in completely. All right. We shall move on. All right. So if you read that first book in the online book, which I hope you did, the first chapter, um, we talk a lot about Web 2.0. So um, what is Web 1.0? Is this a new version? Normally with software, when you go up a you know 1.0 to 2.0, it's a new version of it. So does the web have like some new version or something? Not really. It's not like that. So what is Web 2.0? Would you guys learn or find out about what Web 2.0 is or what it means, kind of lightly? It's basically. It's not just. Um, how do I put it? Um, like. On the web, 1.0 is like basically like basic and read only, basically. And ding, ding, ding. Oh, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, web 2.0, we can like interact and like make our own content. Yeah. And not just going off of stuff that's already made. Perfect. Used to be read only. That's the easiest version I've ever heard. Love it. And now it's interactive. And that's the buzzword we have to think about now. Um, how many of you, because this is going to frame how I do this whole darn class, how many of you remember when websites were kind of read-only? Like you'd pull up a website of a company and the splash screen would be, Welcome to our website. Click here to enter. You go, this is our home page. Hmm? I've only ever seen that. Okay, good. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Because I'm kind of thinking this is, yeah, okay. And then you would go... <laughs> if you've ever been to a site where you had to click enter, no, here to go. Well, sometimes, like, you'll get that now with liquor or um, cigarettes, like, that says, are you 21 to oh, enter? Right. That still exists. But you would go to the home page. There's no navigation other than at the bottom, next, and previous. And you literally clicked through it like a slideshow. Six in a row, you went through those six slides, so six pages as they wanted you to, and that was it. That was read-only, not interactive. And if you wanted to leave them a comment, there was no way on earth to do that. That was web, old web. So, come on, let's go to the next page. Web 2.0 was a term coined in about 2004, and it involves how people use the web. So we are now collaborating, sharing information, um, interactive. That is the main thing. So the internet itself actually dates back to much longer ago than we think as consumers. 1969, um, it was four different networked host computers um, at colleges, I think in California, but it was just four computers that happened to be linked somehow, connected, um, and they could talk back and forth. That was the first internet. 
Now, well, that's way off. I need to update that stat. Um, in 2010, there were more than 5 billion devices connected, um, more than 22 billion by 2020. Let me check on that statistic. So the Internet is just a vast network of um, smaller interconnected computers. So um, email sent from one server to another. If you guys have ever, in the old days, had to set up your email account, it would ask you what SMTP or this or that. It was all scary. Um, and then files themselves, if you want to upload them to a server, depending on what system you're using, um, we're going to talk about WordPress and Wix in this class, where it's much easier. But when we were just doing hand coding, in order to get it onto the internet, we had to use something. And FTP, File Transfer Protocol, was what we would use to upload our files from our personal computer here on our desk to a server that everybody could access on the internet. So web pages are just a collection of documents in human readable format. And they're created with basic text called HTML. I think I showed this to you last week, didn't I? The Visit Wisconsin site, what it looks like on the front versus the back. So this is the front facing site, what we see. That's what the code looks like on the back. So if this is what popped up on your screen when you typed in visitwisconsin.com, that's not really what we call human readable. I mean, it is to people that code and program, but that's not pleasant. We want to see words and graphics and pictures and links. When we click on things, we want it to jump to that page. Um, searches, we want to be able to type in specifically what we want and get there. So major components of this whole new Web 2.0 are it's a social way of using the Internet. It's not one way. It's not read this, move on to the next page, but only the next page. It's do whatever you want. It's interactive. Those are the buzzwords of 2.0. So there's four major components of Web 2.0, and we're going to work through a bunch of these throughout the course of this class. Social media, we just watched a ton of videos on that. Content sharing, filtering and recommendations, and we kind of just talked about that. Um, Yelp, or um, what are some other recommendation sites where you go on? Um, Rotten Tomatoes. What's that? Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, and see what things have been rated and ranked and get opinions that way. And then web apps. So the first one is social media, what comes to mind? Well, we talked about this for the last hour. <laughs> we kind of know what comes to mind. But the basic premise of any of these social media accounts is that you post content with the intent of getting other people to interact. Can you imagine if you put stuff out on your social media and nobody ever said anything, liked it, or anything else? Would you get tired of posting things? Because you don't know if you're getting any interaction. The people that post the, kind of like they're poking the bear on purpose, they're saying something that they know is going to get people talking. Can you imagine if nobody chat, if nobody responded and there was no internet fight over what they just said? <laughs> That's what they're going for. They're going for interactions. So from a business side, um, we're going to use social media to locate, understand and connect with our customers. What do they want? What interests them? What do they need? How can we help them? It's not all about selling. It's all about helping. Here's a recipe, but hey, it needs Johnsonville brats. Imagine that. Um, and then also you can view discussions about your product or services. So feedback, like this was the best um, exhaust pipe I ever bought, period. Installation was a breeze. Customer service was a breeze. I love it. They love stuff like that. Or, this exhaust pipe was crap. I couldn't get it on. They didn't give me the right things, and it fell off when I drove down the road. That kind of thing a company is a, obviously doesn't like to see, but depending on how they react to it and respond, they can take a negative situation and make it positive. If they ignore that person, everybody else reading that feed is going to say, well, they don't give a crap. But if they say, oh my gosh, I'm very sorry, um, our customer service rep is reaching out to you now, or this is, please do this. Then you go, well, at least that company cares and they're paying attention. Uh, instant messaging and texting. So not terribly long ago, and kind of, well, it's not king anymore, but email was the king of internet communication, period. Um, most businesses rely heavily on real-time communication, so... 
uh, chat groups, voice, video, file transfers, um, instant messenger, Google chat, Facebook messenger. Didn't that come up last week that a bunch of you use Facebook Messenger as a, a primary means of communicating with friends and family also? Um, how many of you guys do the video chat quite often with someone? Like, whether it's Facebook or whatever? Yeah. Okay. So, that's real time. Email, you could send it. You didn't necessarily know, unless you did the um, red receipt or the sent receipt, you didn't necessarily know if they saw it, if they opened it. They might have opened it and not wanted to respond to you for three days. Um, that was a one-way communication. All these others are a little bit more of two-way. Um, video and audio conferencing, so personal video chat groups, Skype, um, FaceTime, Android video chat. From a business standpoint, Skype, GoToMeeting, Adobe Connect. You can have meetings now, even Google Chat, with your team and never leave your house and never have to fly out to the East Coast for a meeting. You can all just say we're having a video conference at 9 a.m., have everything ready. You share your documents on the screen. You see a video of every person in the room. It's interactive, live. You see people talking. It's very much changed the way business is done. So um, save some money also in not having to physically be in one location. There are also things of virtual worlds and gaming avatars. Um, any of you do online gaming where it's this idea of a virtual world? I usually have one or two people that are deep into this and can share stories. Um, how many of you have played at some point in time something like an Xbox game with the headsets and you could talk to your friends while you were doing it? That was a crazy thing to think too. Like, I think my children are playing Xbox and really they also set up who's driving tomorrow, who's picking whom up, <laughs> all these things because they're talking live to their friends. Uh, blogging. <clears throat> so this is the tool that kind of really transferred it from Web 1.0 to 2.0, the interactive side of it. Um, instead of just posting static information, now people can comment back. You write something on your blog and people can leave you a comment and people can comment on that comment and onward. So, with a blog, businesses are given an immediate voice to be heard by anyone around the world. So on your business page, you might just be all sell, sell, sell. But if you have a blog page and you can write a little article or post a question to people and get feedback, that gives your business a voice. All right, we're going to take a break here.